This is an opportunity really to recalibrate and to remind ourselves of what is really important, to refresh ourselves in the knowledge of the truth. Burn it forever on my memory So it's always on my mind But you revealed your heart of love for me At that place of sacrifice Burn it forever on my memory So it's always on my mind That you revealed your heart out of love for me At that place of sacrifice I have compromised with temptation Live from the center of my own universe I've known the seeds of rejection Through the ravages of time But then you intervene and the slate was wiped clean When I put my trust in you Burn it forever on my memory So it's always on You revealed your heart of love for me At that place of sacrifice I have compromised with temptation Live from the center of my own you I've known the seeds of rejection Through the ravages of time But then you intervened And the slate was wiped clean When I put my trust in you Burn it forever on my memory So it's always on my mind That you reveal your heart of love for me At that place of sacrifice Bathing in sunlight, write it in letters of gold that God is good. Burn it forever on my memory, so it's always on. You revealed your heart of love for me At that place of sacrifice Yeah, at that place of sacrifice Now I told you it was going to be a real treat And it is indeed to have my friend Malcolm Guite uh, with us today. He's been sitting in the green room. And uh, Malcolm, up in Cambridge here. Yeah. Malcolm is a true poet, uh, 
chaplain at uh, Cambridge University and uh, a travelling itinerant poet who has travelled and lectured all over the world, written numerous books and numerous volumes of poetry. And Malcolm, it's great to have you here. Well, it's great to be here, David. I've been watching your um, your homespun from afar, and um, uh, it's great to see you. Though I hope we'll I hope we'll we'll eventually also get to see each other, uh, uh, you know, uh, in in real life. And um, I remember you came once. I was doing a gig in a in a yurt in East London, and I I saw there was somebody sitting up at the front. That's obviously, right. You know, was watching watching the guitar playing and thinking about the set list, and you know, you came up and gave me a really encouraging <laughs> chat. So, so that was great. It's been good to stay connected ever since. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Malcolm, your your words have, have gone everywhere, and um, you know, I've been so impressed when I see these YouTube lectures of you speaking at universities in uh, in North America and uh, and so on and so forth. You, I mean. You have this ability to capture something in words and you, you particularly are keen for people to capture a, a sense of imagination in, in what they do, aren't you? Yeah, well, that's right. I, I, I think, you know, the imagination um, is one of God's gifts to us. And by imagination, I don't just mean making stuff up like imaginary worlds. I mean mm. the ability to, to get the feel and inner substance of... Uh, of a story or a poem or a song so that your heart goes out and it comes out into you you know c.s lewis once said that you know reason is the is the natural organ for truth but imagination is the organ for meaning you know to know mm. what the truth really means in your heart mm. you you require this imagination and i've always taken the view that when it says you know love the lord your god with all your heart and all your soul all your mind all your strength that includes all your imagination and i feel it's a neglected part of of uh, of the gifts that God's given us. You know, we live in this very ultra rational age that's always mm. chopping everything up and dividing it into tiny little bits and sometimes doesn't know how to put the bits back together again. Mm. Whereas it's the putting the bits back together is where the imagination works, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think we need poetry and song and story. And of course poetry, Jesus song, uses story, yeah. Jesus uses appeals to the imagination constantly with the parables. And of course the Bible is full of poetry, song and story. I mean the book of Psalms is the poetry book of the Bible, isn't it? Yeah, and we're going to be talking about the, yeah. that book of Psalms a little yeah, bit later. Yeah. I'm going to sing a couple more songs uh, as we go a little bit deeper in, into worship, um, sung worship. Uh, but I'm going to ask you to uh, read a, 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 a poem that you, you ran, um, you, you, you did at uh, the podcast that we did, The Singing oh, yeah. Bowl. Yeah, yes, enjoyed doing it. Um, I think it's such a great <coughs> prelude to leading us in, in worship. and uh, Into sort of, yeah. Oh, I'd be very happy to do that. I mean, yeah. when I wrote this, I thought it was just being about listening to the inspiration and trying to find out how to write poetry. But as I wrote it, I realized it was as much, if not more, about prayer. Mm. So here's <clears throat> a singing bowl. Begin the song exactly where you are. Remain within the world of which you're made. Call nothing common in the earth or air. Accept it all, and let it be for good. Start with the very breath you breathe in now, this moment's pulse, this rhythm in your blood, and listen to it, ringing soft and low. Stay with the music. Words will come in time. Slow down your breathing. Keep it deep and slow. Become an open singing bowl whose chime is richness rising out of emptiness and timelessness resounding into time. And when the heart is full of quietness, begin the song exactly where you are. Lord, speak your word for I am waiting Unlock these chains around my heart Release to me a sense of freedom To face the future with your love The fear of man has gagged and bound me 
from being who I really am. A child of God, unique and special. I'm called to be me, not always looking over my shoulder. Set free the song you put within me and let the music play for the glory of your name Restore to me the sense of freedom I found so real when we first met but then I took your love for granted And tried to make it on my own I've lived so long in exile But now it's time for my return Renew me in your Holy Spirit Come fill me again Till my cup is overflowing Set free this song you've put within me And let the music play For the glory of your name Of all the songs I've ever sung, Lord I love the ones when you draw near And touch hearts and lives by your Spirit I love to see you move in power Sometimes it's in spite of me I'm just a vessel of your grace Though I have known your presence in my life Don't let me forget That I'm nothing without your love Set free the song you've put within me And let the music play for the glory of your name Let the music play for your glory of your name out of the warmth and the affection of your love cause us Lord to respond Abba Father let me be yours and yours alone may my forever be evermore your own never let my heart grow cold never let me go Father, let me be yours and yours alone. If you're watching at home, do feel free to join me. Abba, Father, let me be yours and yours. Alone. May 
my will forever be evermore your own never let my heart grow cold never let me go Amen to that. Well, Malcolm, I'm going to get you out of the green room again. Relaxing back there. Yes. Yeah, I was, I was singing along. I mean, I, uh, I, I love singing out the father. It's, uh, you know, I, was, I think probably the first time I saw your name written down. Was, oh, that's that. cool. That's cool. Singing and I'm looking, at, I'm looking at the screen here and you're getting lots of appreciation, Malcolm. For, for the oh, that's great. Yeah, I saw one or two come up. I don't have any means, I think, in the form that I'm in to be able to respond yeah, yeah. to. But yeah. thank you very much to those. I noticed that yeah. people were, I, somebody said they, they'd got a singing bowl and they walk past it every day and then now they're thinking, oh, maybe we can, you know, That's think lovely. about, about the, the, the richness rising out of emptiness. Yeah. Been a special week this week, Bob Dylan, new album. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've been listening. Have you heard to, it yet? Uh, yes, I have. It's very, it's very good. It's got some very, very powerful songs in it. And actually, I think I think some of the faith elements are a little bit more explicit in some of it. It's um, it's very much an end of life, you know, looking back yeah. at the whole thing, the ups and the downs, and um, yeah, it's it's very powerful. I mean, yeah, yeah. rough and ready ways, great title. Yeah, rough and ready ways. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, a ready. lot of it, a lot of it, yeah. like a lot of the Old Testament, like a lot of, yeah, you know, he's got these deep, deep Hebrew roots, of course, still, and a lot of it is is wrestling with the evil of the world, and and you know naming it for what it is uh, yeah. as well as as well as looking for but there's a lot of yearning for eternity in that album i'll tell you there's a lot of weariness with the world and longing for something mm. more mm. now malcolm um many of you will know through the podcast uh, if you haven't listened to podcasts i, I did with malcolm i um, do encourage you to go on my website and davebilbury.com and go to the podcast section and you'll be able to hear how hour of malcolm <laughs> talking about poetry which is absolutely marvelous and it could have gone on forever um but you have been a busy just just lately you've you've taken on a, a huge project tell us a little yeah. bit about that yeah this is sort of unexpected because it wasn't in my you know i did have various things i thought i was going to do and you know get on with but um i think for a lot of people obviously the lockdown's intensified experience in lots of ways and it drives you right back into the basic bedrock sources of your faith and obviously you return to scripture in a new way and I was beginning to find myself really gripped by the book of Psalms and um, thinking about the whole business of praying the Psalms as a Christian. Uh, obviously, they're in the Old Testament and they have their, their, their Old Testament context. But of course, we know that the Psalms were on the lips of Jesus all the time. Mm. And he quotes them. And of course, the rest of the New Testament quotes them. And Luke even tells us that... Um, the, one of the last things in Luke's Gospels, it's, uh, he says not only the Old Testament and the, not, not only the law and the prophets, but pointing to the Psalms, Jesus showed them all the places that he was there. So uh, one of the great tasks to have as a Christian is to pray the Psalms as Christians, to look for Christ in the Psalms, to hear mm. his voice. With all we know subsequent to the time the Psalms were penned and seeing the prophetic element. So I set myself, I, didn't want, I just suddenly thought, you know, you could write a series of poems which are not translations or new versions of the psalm, but in every poem you've reflected on, wrestled, danced with this ancient text that you've prayed for years, mm. and you're now doing it in this crisis, in this new revelation to us again of our dependence on God. And I was, I'm going to write a, a poem. Uh, the task is to write a poem reflecting on the experience of praying each psalm. Mm. And because the way I work as an Anglican priest, we have a lectionary where you, you set a certain number of psalms to say every day. So you really, I'm really familiar with the text. And you just go through them in order. You don't like pick a theme. Or you don't just say, oh, I'm always going to have a nice gentle one like 23. You know, I, you, I've got to have 22 as well. I've got to have the crucifixion. So, so um, I've written the poetry about what it's like to go through the whole Psalter. And to do that, 
I made the poems linked. So like the last line of the poem on Psalm 22 is the first line of the poem on Psalm 23 and the last line of that is... And in fact, I mean, I thought this was going to take me like maybe a year, two years. Mm -hmm. They're each 15 line poems, right? Mm -hmm. And then something really gripped me. I've never written at this intensity in my life ever. I mean, I, you know, I, and I've had intense bouts, but I started this thing at the beginning of May. Mm -hmm. And last Sunday, I wrote number 150. My goodness. So that was 150 poems wow, in, in six weeks. Uh, yes. I, like That's never happened to me before. Mm. Um, obviously, I'm going to need to look back and think and pray and revise and everything, but essentially they're there, uh, which wow. sort of blew my mind, really. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm going to give you the floor at this point to read a, a couple to us, um, okay. Malcolm. I think so, that would be really um, great. Just to sort of give you a bit of a sense of how this works, I am... Um, the, the book I use for my psalms is the translation in the Book of Common Prayer. It's a bit old-fashioned, but it's got very beautiful language in it, and I'm very familiar with it. And they sing it in the chapel that I, I serve, you know, at Girton. So just to give you a flavour, I'm going to read you, so you can get the way they link the two poems, I'm going to read you two of the poems in a row. They're from the poems responding to Psalm 29 and Psalm 30. But just before I do that, I'm just going to give you a little glimpse of those psalms. I mean, you can always read them again yourself, check them out, just so you see where I'm coming from. Uh, and so, because uh, the psalm is like, the, the poems are like a response to the psalm. So Psalm 29, you may remember, <coughs> it's about honouring the Lord's name and then hearing his voice. You know, it, verse two, it says, give the Lord the honour due to his name, worship the Lord with holy worship. And then it goes on about the Lord's power and majesty. There's the Lord that commandeth the waters, the glorious God. And then it shifts. And I thought this would be a nice one for what we're doing today, because it becomes that psalm becomes a hymn to the voice of God, the power of the voice. You know, the voice of the Lord breaketh the cedar trees. The voice of the Lord is a glorious voice. The, lo the voice of the Lord makes the calves skip and the mountains. And the voice of the Lord divides them. It's a great hymn to the voice of the Lord. And then that's followed up immediately in Psalm 30 um, with the way the voice of the Lord comes to you personally. And it's got that beloved verse which says, For his wrath endureth but the twinkling of an eye, and in his pleasure is life. Heaviness may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. You know, one of those great things. So I'll just read you now the two poems that I wrote and I'll read them straight after you so you see how they link for 29 and 30. So here's my, my poem uh, for Psalm 29, which is, of course, this thing about the voice. But you'll see I'm thinking about Christ all the way through. I'm, this is a New Testament reading, if you like, of an Old Testament uh, poem. So, 29. Call us, O Christ, and open up the gate. Call us to worship with your mighty voice, the voice that sings through rivers in full spate, the voice in which the forests all rejoice, the voice that rolls through thunderclouds and calls the deep seas and the steep waves, the quiet voice that stirs our sleeping conscience and recalls us to the love we had abandoned leads us through the parting mists of doubt or falls upon us like a revelation pleads with us upon the poor's behalf blazes in glory from each burning bush and bleeds out of compassion's wounds raises our spirits till we dance for joy and gives us too a voice to sing his praises so that's the one on 29 and here's the one on 30 he gives us, too, a voice to sing his praises, so much the more because we were brought low that we might know we have a God who raises up the lowly. Riches made us slow to love you, slow to turn to you in praise. But sudden loss and crisis made us know our true dependence on your love. Our days of false security are gone. We fell into a pit of our own making. Raise us up again, each out of our own hell, and give us oil for ashes, joy for mourning. Restore us in your love, 
and we will tell of how through our long night we heard your warning and heeded you and found your love again how night withdrew and joy came in the morning so that gives you a little taste of what i'm doing <laughs> what stuff malcolm powerful powerful imagery god bless you man well it's great doing. to be great to be on on, on your homespun man <laughs> Yeah, talking about uh, newly released albums. Neil Young's just uh, released Homegrown, so maybe he's ripping on you. Ah, uh, Homegrown. <laughs> well, we'll see, you know. Over, <laughs> over these 14 weeks, some songs have come, and uh, we'll see yeah. what happens. Okay, so, it's, been, it's been really good. Thank you here. so much for joining us. Malcolm, how can people find out more about your material? So I've got a, I've got a WordPress blog. If you just go <clears throat> malcolmguite.com or Malcolm Guite WordPress, you'll find it pretty quickly. Mm. And I'm doing these psalm poems. Actually, you guys had a sneak peek of the advanced ones. In the blog, I've only got as far as uh, Psalm 21. So uh, mm. every two or three days, I put one up and I read it and write about it a little bit. So. There's something about the delivery of the word. It's just like singing a song. Yeah, yeah I, I, I think a, poetry isn't, a poem isn't a poem when it's on the flat page. It's got to be breathed mm. into the air, I think. Mm. Yeah. Malcolm, it's been a delight to have you on our it's home great to be with you, yeah. And thank uh, you for joining us. Thank you for giving the time because I know yeah. that you're a very busy man. God bless <laughs> yeah. you. And, okay. Uh, God bless you. Back to the green room. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> oh, that was wonderful. This is the place. Where dreams are found Where a vision comes A cold holy ground Holy ground I'm standing on holy ground for the Lord my God is here with me. Your fire burns, but never dies. I realize. This is holy ground Holy ground I'm standing on holy ground For the Lord my God Is here with me The great I am Revealed to man Take off your shoes This is holy ground holy I'm standing on holy ground For the Lord my God is here with me Sing with me, holy ground Holy ground I'm standing on holy Where we are today, Lord, 
with all our thoughts and anxieties and fears and struggles and worries about the future. We want to live and to recognize right where we are is a place of holy ground. Your presence is with us, surrounding us, within us. We thank you that wherever your presence is, there is hope and there is life and there is healing. And there is strength to take us forward. Lord, we breathe in the aroma of who you are. Pure undiluted love. Pure grace. We breathe in your strength and we thank you that your spirit is with us. Holy ground I'm standing on Holy ground For the Lord my God is here with me here with me amen amen well i did book a haircut i made a phone call I booked it up Tuesday the November the 17th 2.30 a p.m. Um, I did manage to get in. I hope you're um, enjoying and have enjoyed our new style homespun. Uh, we're going to be doing some more changes as time goes on. I've got some ideas for next week that will be really exciting. Once I've spoken to Pat and to Jan down in Somerset to make sure everything is okay. Who am I that you should bestow upon me the love so freely, love so freely? Who am I that you should bestow upon me your love so freely, love so freely, even when the winter comes and my life is dull and gray, you never turn away. You never turn away Disappointed with myself Too afraid to ask for help You never turn away You never turn away Who am I? You shall bestow upon me your love so freely, love so freely. Plans I've made have come undone, misunderstood by everyone. And yet there is no shame, yet there is no shame. Who am I? You should bestow upon me Your love so freely Love so freely I'm so grateful I'm so grateful I'm so grateful Who am I? You should bestow upon me your love so freely, love so freely, oh my, Yeah, 
Thanks so much for joining us this week. I'm going to sing one more song to you. Always great to have you here and thank you for your messages. <laughs> no, Chris, this wasn't the stuff behind the uh, black curtain. No, this is a different room. We thought we'd move it around. And maybe one day I'll take you up to the room where I actually write my songs. That'll be interesting. Thanks for joining us. Here's one more song to finish. Make my heart blaze With the love of Jesus Whatever I face I will follow you Wherever you take me You will never forsake me There's no turning back Cause I'm following you I'm following you It's not always easy I've been hurt and confused But faith is believing That you'll see me through You've changed my direction Turned my life around There's no one can rob me of this joy that I found I make my heart blaze With the love of Jesus Whatever I face I will follow you You'll never forsake me On the journey Making. There's no turning back Cause I'm following you I'm following you It's time to move forward And break through to new ground I won't be restricted by the lure of the crowd I'll stand with the homeless The plight of the poor The innocent victims Of the horrors of war Make my heart bleed with the love of Jesus Whatever I face I will follow you Wherever you take me You'll never forsake me There's no turning back Cause I'm following you I'm following you. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining us. Thank you again, Malcolm Guy, for being so generous with your time. Time for the football results. Or well, the West Ham score is going to come up soon anyway. Or well, the West Ham match anyway. See you again soon. Bye-bye.